system guest back on. You've seen him here before, hopefully. But in uh, before we do that, I just want to remind everybody that futures and options trading contain substantial risk, not for every trader. You could potentially lose all or even more than all of your initial investment. That's why we recommend you use risk capital. What is risk capital? It's money you can afford to lose, doesn't extend your retirement, doesn't change your lifestyle, doesn't keep you up at night. Also want to remind everybody that past performance, not necessarily indicative of future results. And what we talk about here on the show contains neither trade recommendations nor financial advice should be used for educational purposes only. And with that, it is my pleasure to welcome back Patrick Mullen from Gorilla Futures. Patrick, how are you doing today? Good. How are you doing, Tom? I'm glad to be glad to be back and talk about a few uh, few new things going on and uh, see if we can help some people out a little bit. Yeah, no, I'm excited <laughs> when when we were talking about you know what what's going to be the next topic. You brought this up, and I it, wow, this is exciting. This will be fun. I'm, I can't wait for the explanation. Uh, yeah. It's been a while since we talked. I, I think maybe the last time we talked, you were heading out to Michigan. Maybe you were back. How was that trip? It was probably a little bit ago. Yeah, it was about a month ago, maybe probably a month and a half ago. I know it was really nice. We went up there, you know, did kind of the rustic thing, stayed in a cabin, you know, kind of hiked around and stuff like that. Uh, so it was a blast. You know, I mean, we like to go up towards the the upper peninsula you know, maybe once a year, try to get the whole fall experience with the leaves and all that. And uh, no, it was, it was, it was really nice. It's something that we'll probably uh, uh, go back to the exact same spot last year or uh, next year. So, uh, so yeah, that was great. You have a good That's Thanksgiving. Great. Yeah. Thanksgiving was great. I just have to say, I grew up going to the upper peninsula as well every year uh, up in the Houghton Hancock area. Love oh, yeah. it up there. Yeah, it's it's great, and um, you're right. I, I would go in the summer, so I wouldn't get to see the fall colors, but um, certainly fishing, swimming, uh, sailing on those yep. lakes is just pretty spectacular. Yeah, if if you can get there during the nice weather and everything, I mean, it's absolutely beautiful uh, up there. And yeah, I mean, definitely something that we will end up going uh, going back towards for sure. Well, that's awesome. Yeah, I, how was your Thanksgiving? Sounds like it was pretty uh, pretty exciting for you. It was, you know, I mean, we did kind of just our traditional Thanksgiving stuff. And then on um, Friday, so the following day, uh, we actually ended up getting engaged. So that was a, that was a big, uh, a big thing for us. We've been together for about six, six and a half years. So uh, yeah, it was a, it was, it was a great holiday uh, to, to say uh, nonetheless. Oh, you that's, guys? that's great. That I mean, that's awesome. Congratulations well, to thank you, you. I appreciate your, your fiance it. and um, good news all around. So uh no, every, everything was good. Pretty cool here at the Schneider House. Pretty chill. Yeah. Um, got to spend. My daughter's in college. She didn't come home for for Thanksgiving. She did last okay. year. She did this year. So it was kind of we were at, we were down one down one uh, yep. this Thanksgiving. But um, she was in good hands with uh, both my family and my wife's family back in Chicago. So okay, well, um, good, good, good. You know, as long as she's with family and and some friends, that's all yeah. you care about. A hundred percent. Yeah. But it, you know, I took a little bit extra day yesterday. So kind of like raring to go to see what you have and to hear you talk about the markets. Yeah. So just, just a little uh, recap here. Uh, you know, uh, for those of you who maybe haven't turned tuned into these before, I've been trading 10, 11 years or so uh, started with the Forex market, uh, big swing trader. Uh, and you know, my, my only gripe with Forex, uh, there, there's a few gripes, but my main gripe was, uh, you know, the the news late at night. So I transitioned into stocks and then ended up here with futures. I've uh, been trading futures for what, five, six years, something like that. Uh, and just a real big fan of uh, futures uh, in the past, especially if you've seen some of these other trader webinars. I've been a real big tick chart price action guy. Uh, and recently I've kind of transitioned more towards the order flow, excuse me, order flow and footprint charts uh, and things like that, just to kind of get a little, uh, I like to call it kind of the, the foot map behind the chart. Uh, you know, I mean, we really get a better understanding of why price is moving, where that volume's coming from, you know, where are buyers, sellers, you know, where are they leaning on either the bid, the ask or something like that. And then see if we can kind of leverage that uh, uh, kind of in, in our, um, uh, in, in our favor, you know, so that's kind of what, what I've been working on here. You know, we're going to introduce, uh, some new products today. We have our foot map, excuse me, our footprint pro indicator. We also came out with our heat map profile as well. Uh, and we, we will be talking about those kind of throughout, uh, throughout today's webinar. So definitely excited, 
uh, to get going with that. And uh, from there, I mean, I think we can just jump over to the charts and just kind of start from there. Yeah, I love it. And, and you know, looking at the chart, um, you know, if we can show that on screen, you know, the great thing about this is it, it incorporates so much visually, right? It's it's to me, it's like you're packing in a lot of information here, but it's visually it makes sense, right? So it's yeah. it's an easy way to digest a whole bunch of information yet you know you can understand it yeah a hundred percent so what you're seeing on screen right here uh this is our or gorilla futures footprint indicator um you know just to kind of run through kind of a, a few of the the items that kind of make us stand out from others uh, we do have delta alerts uh, so what you can see down here at the bottom and i've turned into a big delta fan uh real big divergent fan as well uh, we're talking about that more here in just a moment um, but i wanted to kind of create something that kind of aids in that style of trading uh, and i like to look for these larger delta uh, readouts and that's what we can see down here uh, on our footprint summary and we actually highlight these. So what we can do is we can go in there, we can change this. Uh, it does come set at 500, so that's 500 positive, 500 negative for that delta, uh, and we can look for squeezes and things like that. Uh, we also have our percent, max, min, cumulative delta, and volume delta down here, uh, excuse me, volume down here on our footprint summary as well. Uh, different traders uh, use different, um, you know, kind of different readouts here. Uh, personally, my kind of go-to trading chart here is set up just like this. Uh, and we're talking more about this here in just a moment, kind of why I have that set up. But I do just want to hit on a few, uh, you know, kind of a, the details of this Footprint Pro indicator, indicator that we've been working on for the past few months. Uh, what we can also see up here at the top, uh, we do have our bar stats. So we do have our delta, we have our percentage, we have uh, you know our volume, and then we also have our bid and ask volume. Uh, this last one is something that a lot of our members have actually been asking about uh, as we kind of transition more into kind of a volume type approach. Uh, so we know you know who's hitting the bid, who's hitting the ask, you know how big are those imbalances, uh, and that is that last readout right here at the bottom. And again, different traders will use that for different reasons, uh, but big, big, big fan of, you know, having as much information as possible and then be able to toggle this information on and off. Uh, now, before we look at using this, we do have one other uh, kind of important uh, portion of this is imbalances. Uh, it seems like imbalances and those of you who uh, may be new to kind of the footprint order flow setup, uh, an imbalance is simply when there is more uh, you know, volume on either the bid or the ask, you know, it can happen on both sides. And what we can do is we can go in here and determine, you know, I want to see twice as amount, twice the amount on one side or the other, or three times or four times, you know, our indicator comes standard with four times. So what we can see here is one, we have a stacked imbalance set up and we're talking more about this in a second. I just want to introduce everything here. We do have this stacked imbalance set up you know, once we do get indicated in there, we also have this box right here that indicates, you know, hey, you know, we had this stacked imbalance. We could see price come back to finish any unfinished business or anything like that. And it's just something to help visualize where those stacked imbalances are. And, you know, we can potentially use those in the future. Uh, with the range bound market that we've currently been in for really the past two and a half weeks or so, uh, three weeks, depending on how you kind of want to swing it, uh, you know, we can simply look at these levels to potentially turn into support and or resistance, uh, kind of like we did see earlier uh, this morning, actually about a half an hour or so ago, uh, right around that 11 o'clock hour. So those are just a few of kind of the the, the, the intricate details of the Footprint Pro, uh, and we're talking more about that kind of towards the end, but I want to get into kind of the, the meat and potatoes of things uh, when it comes to kind of actually trading, you know, a footprint setup, an order flow setup. And, you know, there's, there's a million different ways to trade this, so I'm just going to kind of walk through uh, some of the ways that I like to trade uh, off this footprint uh, setup. And again, if you have any questions as we go, then by all means, just simply throw it in the box or get you squared away. 
So what we can see here is I have my chart. My chart is very kind of delta oriented. So you can see I do have my delta readouts down here along the bottom. I also have my delta up here, you know, kind of uh, two birds, one stone type of thing. You know, I like to see it just to make sure I don't miss anything. And essentially what I'm looking for is I'm looking for squeezes. Uh, so what I like to call a squeeze is, you know, uh, for an example, lots of times where we have a pullback and just to visualize this, we're going to drop down to a tick chart here real quick. Lots of times when we have a pullback, let me zoom in so we can see this. We do see volume start to accumulate in that pullback area. Well, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for people, you know, maybe trying to take the breakout. You know, I'm looking for people maybe FOMO buying, you know, maybe they end up buying up here in hopes that price continues running up and then they get squeezed. Uh, and a lot of times how we see that is, let me get back to my chart here. A lot of times how we see that is a delta divergence. So for those of you who might not know what divergence is, it is just simply the opposite. You know, that's how I like to look at it. So if we had a green candle right here and our delta was negative, that would be a delta divergence. You know, we had a red candle and positive delta, you know, that'd be another delta divergence. So when you think of divergence, you know, it's just kind of a fancy way to say kind of the opposite. You know, there's a million different divergent indicators and stuff out there. It's a very popular topic. Uh, so don't kind of get uh, confused. It's simply just the opposite of kind of what's going on. So what I like to do is, and let's just kind of go back to a random time here. I don't have any exact trades uh, set up here or anything like that. So what we can see here is about 10 o'clock this morning, price was kind of moving down. We get a slight pullback. And what we can see here is we do have positive delta. Okay. So, you know, we're having more buyers right here. We are potentially trapping those bulls. Uh, you know, now every time you have a Delta divergence or anything like that, that doesn't automatically mean, you know, that divergent trade is going to turn into a winning trade. We're simply trying to, like I've said in previous webinars, stack the deck, you know, so we're trying to see that divergence. We're trying to see, you know, maybe that point of control up here, you know, we're trying to go with the trend, the VWAP, all that stack those together so we can have the best probability of possibly having a winning trade because we know not every trade is going to be a winning trade, unfortunately. But if we can put as much in our favor here, you know, hopefully we can maybe increase that uh, probability just a little bit more if we weren't actually using that information. So that's what I mean when I say stacking the deck. Uh, it's something that I use, uh, a term that I use a lot. Uh, and the main reason why is I'm just a visual person, you know, uh, that's just an easy way to kind of uh, think of all those things. So what we can see right here, you know, this was at 10.01 a.m. Eastern. This is on our MES. Everything we talk about is applicable to the ES, the NASDAQ, things like that. But what we can see is price had a little bit of a pullback. We actually pulled back to our EMA. That is a 21 EMA. This is just our standard VWAP indicator up here. Nothing fancy uh, with that. This is actually the one that does come with uh, the order flow suite of NinjaTrader. So we do see a little bit of a pullback. Uh, we do end up trapping our bulls up here. Notice all of this bullish activity up here. We do have positive delta, and then we get a nice little pullback. Now, unfortunately, price has been stuck in a range. Like I said, if we want to look at that daily chart real quick, you know, price has really been stuck in a range uh, since the 11th. So pretty much half of November, we have been stuck kind of between that 4,000 down to about 39.50, 39.60 level, depending on how you want to swing it. So these moves that we are looking at are smaller moves. And why? Well, you know, we're not going to aim for a large move when price is stuck in a tight range. You know, don't get me wrong. We all want to knock out 10, 20, 30 point winners. But if the range is only 10, 20, 30 points, you know, we might be going a little too far uh, going after that. So I'm scalping about a three, four point uh, setup here in this range. And if you do end up waiting and that alert you heard right there, that is a Delta alert. We'll talk about that more in a moment. Uh, but if you are scalping, you know, you're getting in right around 67. Uh, if you're lucky without slippage, you get out around 63. You know, you're looking anywhere three, four points, depending on how much slippage uh, you're uh, potentially running into with a setup like that. So, uh, so Patrick, real quick, a couple of things yeah. I want to clarify um, or, or have you clarify. This is a range chart. Right. This yes. is this is um, where you set the range to a certain number of ticks. I believe it's 15. Yeah. So. Uh, so, yeah, one, I probably should have hit on that in the beginning. But yeah, so essentially a range chart is price has to hit 
15 different levels. You know, so what we can see in here, we're going to have a minimum of 15 levels on the 16th level, you know, sometimes the 17th, depending on how fast price is moving, you know, we are going to generate a new bar. Uh, I am a big fan of tick charts. I'm a big fan of range charts as well. And the reason being is, you know, I'm a huge believer that time doesn't move price. You know, I mean, we, we've seen days where if you look at the five minute chart, you know, we've pretty much flatlined all day long. And, you know, I don't want to see 20, 30, 40, 50, a hundred five minute candles. When in reality, you know, I could simply display that same data with a handful of range candles and I'm not getting stuck in that chop. So, uh, some people are a big fan of kind of these range tick type charts. They are similar to a certain degree. Um, and then some people do like to stick to those time-based charts, you know, this footprint indicator, you know, it still is applicable to time-based charts, uh, you know, pretty much all the way up to a daily chart, uh, is what you can use a kind of a footprint setup on, um, at least our footprint indicator. So hopefully that's that great. does clear. Yeah, up that's, that. that's great. I mean, I, you know, for those who do prefer those time-based charts to know <laughs> that it's on, you can do this on a time-based chart, right? Because Yep. You're just assigning that bid ask um, depth to a, a time based chart rather than a range chart. It doesn't really matter. Hundred um, percent. So I, I I like that. The other thing I want to you know kind of touch on too is the divergence. Yeah. And we we've talked about divergence in our bookend shows when um, we talk about momentum indicators. Um, you have a divergence. The most common that I think I look for is RSI divergence, and that's. Yeah fairly standard what i what i like about the footprint footprint charts is generally with uh rsi divergence the indicator leads the price right so if there's divergence it, it the price is going up but the rsi isn't that's showing weakness what i like about these footprint charts you flipped it around meaning the dominant force or the dominant uh, uh yeah force might be the right term of the chart is not necessarily the price but it's more about that um, bid ask uh, uh, delta yeah. and the divergence with price. You follow the price, which is really kind of conceptually easier to to, to grasp. Yeah, uh, that, that that's one of the big reasons why we kind of transition to something like this. And, you know, I mean, we, we talk about indicators all the time. You know, it's it's a very popular topic, you know, whether you look on YouTube or whatever website out there, you know, everyone has an indicator. But. I'm not the biggest indicator fan. Uh, and the reason being is a lot of indicators are lagging. So, uh, you know, maybe if you're new to trading, what you, what you don't understand is the indicator is simply just a complex code or a simple code. It takes that information and then it displays it on the chart. So the reason why I've switched to more of a Delta cumulative Delta fan uh, is because all these numbers are developing live. You know, if we want to go back to, let's just go back to, you know, what's going on right now on our chart. We're going to be able to see our delta is changing, you know, all day long. You know, we get that live number, you know, so we can start to potentially look at some of these divergent setups, you know, kind of like this right here. You know, we technically this is a divergent setup. We can say, OK, this bar is turning red. We still have positive delta. If you're a trader like me that likes to wait for that confirmation, meaning I wait for that candle to close. Some people like to do that. Some people don't. Um, you know, you can kind of sit there, finger on trigger, you're ready. And, you know, once you do get that confirmation, then you can potentially jump in the trade. So uh, I'm a big fan of indicators that aren't lagging, uh, you know, so you're going to see that on our heat map here in a moment that we talk about. I'm all about indicators that don't lag. So I, I hope that that did make that clarification between, you know, lagging indicators Our lagging indicator. A great example here is a, is an EMA. This is a 21 EMA on my screen here. Nothing special, nothing secret about it. You know, it's just simply there to help me identify what that trend is. Uh, you know, we've all seen those EMA crossovers where they look great hindsight wise, but the reason they look great hindsight wise is you didn't realize how much they were lagging, you know, kind of in, in the moment. So hopefully that does make that clarification between uh, lagging and non-lagging indicators. Oh, that's great. I appreciate that. That that and that makes sense, right? Is the development of of the uh delta 
with the direction. You can see it live as it happens. 100%. I totally get it. And and you're right. You're looking to these other indicators to confirm, not to not to anticipate. A hundred percent. So like with, with my VWAP I have on the screen right here, you know, technically this is a lagging indicator. Uh, you know, so I am kind of going against what I said a little bit, but I don't technically use that VWAP to get into or out of trades. I use that to stack the deck, you know, for an example, you know, so if we were looking back at this trade that we just talked about a moment ago, one price is down. You're going to be able to see that here in a moment. When we look at this heat map, you're going to see prices moving down. You know, I can see VWAP is moving down, you know, bears are in somewhat control, even though we're in a range. So, you know, if, the, if, if everything's flowing to the downside, there's no reason to try to fight it. You know, I simply want to kind of go with what's working, jump in, grab a handful of points, get out, wait till I get that next Delta signal, and then hopefully get back in kind of rinse and repeat a few times throughout the day. So that's kind of the way that I like to trade the footprint setup with the Delta. Uh, again, you know, if we switch back to kind of this view, you know, there's umpteen different ways that you can pair this up. Maybe you like to see high volume, low volume, you know, maybe you're looking for a specific cumulative Delta number. Maybe you're looking, you know, to kind of just swing trade this a little bit and you wait until the cumulative Delta, you know, exceeds or, you know, gets too low for your number. There's a million different ways to trade. Uh, and the reason why I've really switched over to that footprint setup is it's more of a live setup. You know, we don't have those lagging indicators, uh, you know, those lagging numbers that we do see with some of those other charts uh, and some of those other trading styles. So that's one of the main reasons why I did switch over to something like this. One one last thing before we go on to our kind of a next step here is what we can see here, and I didn't clarify this, you know, I do, we do have to run through these things a little quickly is this box right here, this is our point of control. You know, this is where we're having the most volume. So what I like to see, especially in a setup like this, I like to see the point of control up here, you know, and, and it might sound brutal here, but, you know, trading is kind of a zero sum game. I want to see someone dump a ton of volume up here and then get trapped. Why? Because we know when they get trapped, they're going to have to take the other side of that position to get out. And hopefully that leads, you know, to us, you know, better liqui li liquidity. Maybe we're easier to get in and out of trades. You know, maybe it, you know, sets a whole slew of sell orders or something like that off. So we can hopefully use that, you know, unfortunately use someone else's uh, issue, turn that into a benefit for us. And unfortunately that's just kind of trading, you know, in, in a nutshell. Uh, and that's another thing that I just really look for and simply look to kind of stack the deck when price uh, or when we do see that point of control up there. Um, so we let's go look at, let's see if we can find kind of a bullish example here real quick. Uh, like I said, you know, simply just looking at some of these previous trades, we don't have anything picked out exactly today, uh, but let's see if we can get a bullish example in here real quick. So perfect bullish example right here. Uh, this, uh, I believe, is yesterday uh, going into the close here. We end up with this nice double bottom situation here. Uh, for those of you that might not be up to date on your price action market structure, a double bottom price simply bottoms relatively close to the same spot. Uh, you know, we can have double, triple bottoms, so on and so forth. But what we can see is we do get a double bottom here. Notice how, you know, price, we don't have our point of control all the way down here. But we do see a lot of sell orders down here. You know, you can see lots of red down here. We do end up squeezing some of those bears. Once we squeeze those bears, we get this nice run up. Add in here that, you know, there is a decent amount of negative delta. It's not the most negative delta, but it's honestly, you know, a decent number. You know, this is a trade that I would feel comfortable taking, uh, you know, Combine that with the fact that we are very gapped away from our uh, 21 EMA. So that sets us up for a potential mean reversion trade. Uh, a mean reversion trade kind of in a nutshell is price reverts back to its mean. The mean is simply the average price. And that's what that 21 EMA is showing. So if you're lucky, you know, you get into this trade with little to no slippage, you get in around 65, you know, I'm always conservative on my targets. So if I think price is going to run up to that VWAP, I'm maybe getting out around 70, 69, something like that, just so I can make sure that I do have that number get hit, my target is hit, and then I can move on. And like I said in the beginning, just kind of rinse and repeat and hopefully do that a few times throughout the day, uh, combine the Delta, you know, combine price. And then we can also combine uh, imbalances if you are an imbalanced trader, and then hopefully we can get a few trades in there. So 
Hopefully that bullish example does make sense. And it's exactly the same as kind of that bearish example we just talked about, uh, except, you know, it's obviously flipped on its head. So, so Patrick, you, you, in this example, you've taken the trade, you've hit your target, you're moving on. Are you, obviously you're looking, trying to, to establish another uh, setup in this market, but are, are you looking at also like uh, micro NASDAQ? Are you looking at the E-mini Dow? Are you looking at other markets to do the same thing, right? Uh, yeah, hundred percent. So this is, so I have, uh, you, you can't see it here. Sometimes you see it when I'm, I'm on the other side. So I have three screens set up right here. Uh, on one of my top screens here, I have the market analyzer, just the standard Ninja Trader market analyzer. Uh, I do have it set up to change colors again, very visual. You know, I want to be able to look at it and see, Hey, we're all in the red. I might want to take a look at shorts, green might want to go for some longs. So yeah, you know, if everyone is moving to the downside, I'm probably going to favor shorts a little bit until we get to a situation like this, you know, where price is pretty gapped away, you know, maybe we've been spending a lot of time down here, you know, then that's when I start to look for trapping some of those bears. And then I also keep an eye on, you know, what's the NASDAQ doing? Was the NASDAQ just down a percent and then it, you know, jumped up, you know, to negative eight tenths of a percent, you know, so we have that two tenths of a move or something like that, you know, are we seeing everyone else kind of following suit with what's going on? Because again, all I'm trying to do is kind of go with the flow, uh, you know, so go with the flow. If we're moving up, I want to take longs. We're moving down. I want to take shorts and I don't really want to fight, uh, you know, kind of go against the trend until I have enough information that says, you know, that trend could be potentially pausing or reversing. And then let's see if we can maybe get in kind of a somewhat quick scalp or somewhat quicker move uh, as price kind of reverts back to our mean. And a lot of times what people don't understand is, and we're going to kind of segue into our volume map here is a lot of time when price pulls back, we pull back and we can establish volume. So a lot of times we can see some volume accumulation on those pullbacks. So if we just want to go and look at the 4,500 tick chart here real quick, uh, one, you know, we have been in a very range bound situation here. So what we can see is notice every time we get a pullback, notice all the volume that we're seeing in here. Now this volume is displayed by these lighter and darker blue gradient colors. Darker the color means we have more volume there. Lighter the color means we have less volume. Now we are stuck in a range and let me clean up this chart just a little bit for you. This is from our live stream this morning. What we can see here is we accumulated some volume, nice move to the downside. We start to accumulate some volume on the downside, nice move up, and we can see we start to accumulate more volume at this pullback. So a lot of times what I look for in this trend is I want to see price pull back. Once we do get that pullback, I look to see, you know, one, have we trapped anybody? You know, do we have our divergence? And then two, I really like to see price pull back to a high volume area. I want to see people loading up, ideally loading up in favor of my position. So if I'm going short, you know, I want to see that bid ask favoring one side or the other, depending on which way I'm going. And then, you know, it's the same thing. We're stacking the deck time and time again hopefully adding up all that information so we can get some trades in. So this right here is our heat map. Like Tom said in the beginning, you know, this is applicable to different time frames, whether it's a tick chart, range chart, time chart, you know, you name it, it pretty much works up to it on a daily chart as long as it includes tick replay data. What we can see here off to the right is we have our custom profile. So that is showing what we're currently looking at on the screen. We have our entire session right here on the right-hand side. And then all the way to the right, we do have our previous session. So the reason why this is really important is a lot of times during that previous session, we can see these high volume nodes. We can go and look at where was that volume being displayed yesterday? Are we you know, stuck in a range? Are we playing those same areas? Or are we simply rejecting that and continuing to go on with the trend? Uh, additionally, right here, we do have our delta and volume readouts. So what we can see right here, our cumulative delta for this nice little chunk right here is negative 1,000, pretty much 1,100. And we can also see we do have about 170 contracts that have been traded right here. And one thing I do want to clarify, I know I'm uh, giving a lot of information out here all at once. 
all of these are active orders, you know? So these are all orders that have actually been placed. You know, we're not looking at resting orders. We don't have to worry about people, you know, spoofing, pulling orders, anything like that. These are all orders that have actively been placed in the market. You know, it is a done deal. So you don't have to worry about seeing that big volume spike, you know, someone's spoofing, uh, and then they pull all those orders and then you're kind of left there, uh, holding the bag, you know, and you kind of get squeezed by somebody else's trade. So uh, real quick, Patrick, I have a question about yeah. that view because it's really fascinating. That first volume distribution that you show, just containing the, this current, uh, actually on the right axis, the volume profile. Oh, yeah, over here. Um, so right there, that first one that you have on the left, that is the the volume, the small volume. Is that the volume for the current trend or... Is it the volume for that range of the current trend, right? There's yes. a difference. A hundred percent. Okay. So it is for that. And what we can see here is, you know, this is all back testable. So what a lot of my kind of beef with volume profile is volume profile is a great summary. You know, don't get me wrong. I love looking at volume profile, but it's hard to see what was really happening. You know, so if you have your standard volume profile chart, you know, it just looks like there's a bunch of volume there. But what we can do here is we can go back and actually see where this volume was being accumulated as it was happening. So what we can see here is, and I like to use this as just another kind of filter or another stacking the deck is, if everything's red, you know, I'm maybe going to look at taking some shorts. Once price starts moving up, we do start to turn positive. You know, our profiles are turning green. We are green on the session. You know, we are green in this chunk right here. That's showing about 165,000 uh, contracts have been traded. You know, so maybe I want to look at taking some longs. Now, obviously we are in this range bound situation. So we want to always kind of be conscious of that overall trend and not just be so focused onto that little trend right there. But I think it's a great tool and it's a great way to go back and see where that point of control was, you know? So pre-market wise, our point of control was sitting right around 3980, meaning that's where the bulk of today's volume or pre-market overnight Globex volume was coming from. You can see once we did end up loading up there with some volume, we did end up moving to the downside. So, uh, you know, it is a play on volume profile combined with a heat map to really show you where that volume is, where has it been, uh, and then hopefully set you up to, you know, uh, combine this with whether it's a footprint chart, a tick chart, uh, to really kind of understand what is going on with, uh, uh, with, with the current trend and where those trades are coming in at. And that's and and that's a really great feature. I mean, that so true about looking at volume profile now and trying to figure out well when was the point of control established? Was it established early in the session, or did we trade up to it and and build it? But this, I really like to see the distribution of the current trend, whatever that trend is, you know, designated. That's that's really fascinating. And just just one more example here because we also have a delta version of this. So uh, just to clarify. This uh, indicator right here, this is our heat map profile indicator. Uh, we're going to show you that here on the website here in just a moment. Um, but this is our kind of proprietary indicator that we have developed, you know, to really show you where the volume is and then pair that up with a footprint chart so you can kind of get the best of both worlds. But to uh, touch on what Tom was just saying, talking about kind of the distribution, and I was talking about where we get those pullbacks, we see volume loaded up. So if you were trading yesterday, you, you would have known, you know, yesterday, another difficult day, you know, we've kind of had two, two and a half weeks of pretty difficult movement. What we can see here is price starts to move to the downside a little bit, and we don't necessarily break out, but we do get a little bit of a pullback. Once we get that pullback, you can see we're loading up on volume. Our point of control for the day actually shifts to the downside. Price starts to move. We get this nice big sell-off. We see price start to pull back a little bit again. We see that accumulation of volume, and then we lead to another nice move to the downside. So it's a great way, you know, like I said a moment ago, to go back, be able to actively back test this. You know, I have this setup right here off to the left of one of my screens. I just leave it real zoomed out so I can get a great picture of what's going on. And I can quickly kind of zoom over there and just go back. Oh, you know, our point of control was up here at, you know, one o'clock, but after the lunch hour, and now we're down here. So it's a great way to easily see 
where that volume has been, you know, what was and even what was that cumulative delta at that period of time, you know, and how was price really moving? So uh, just kind of a, a, a few factors about why I really like uh, that heat map indicator. And then additionally, we have a delta version as well. So the delta version simply shows we can see our red for our sells. We have our green for our buys and it's just like our normal Delta, uh, but it is visualized. So we can see where are all those sell orders coming in? Where are all those buy orders coming in? Uh, I'm not the biggest uh, user of this Delta version. I really like the volume, you know, volume to me is what resonates, but there are a lot of traders out there that do like to see this. Uh, and it's something that you can use in the same exact way that you use the volume portion of that heat map. Um, so I know uh, there's a lot to talk about here, but I hope that does kind of cover some of the, the volume profile, the heat map uh, and the footprint chart, you know, and we kind of combine all those together uh, and we ideally kind of use them all for a signal. Hey, Patrick, real quick, can we just before we move on, uh, yeah. can we take a look at the Russell today in in this view? Because uh, we were talking about it this morning on the on the opening That's range that uh, Russell behaves so much differently than the other other stock index futures today. Yeah. So I don't know if that's uh, something we could take a look at, but um, different inflection points, different trends right at the open. <clears throat> Just wondering what that looks like on this kind of chart. Let's see. Uh oh, I think I accidentally uh, put it down here on the bottom of this. So we might have two charts in one. Yeah, let me just... Let's see. Let that load real quick. Actually. So what did you want to see? The open Just here? Just like right, right around the open today. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe. And again, you're looking at a range chart, so it might be yeah. a little bit uh, different. It was probably the first half hour of of regular trading hours that we saw, you know, so, we saw this um, interesting behavior, let's say. Yeah. So I was watching, let's see, can I still pull this up? Yeah. So I've been watching the Russell all day long. I'm glad you brought that up. The Russell has pretty much been the only thing that's been staying green for the majority. I don't of think the I can hear you. I don't know, maybe that's how about, me. Okay. Uh, so for the majority of the day, at least from when, when I was trading, the Russell has been green. Uh, you know, it's really been the only, only, uh, index, at least the ones that I follow, I keep an eye on these like kind of three, uh, that has been staying green all day. So we can see that off that market analyzer as well. And you can see, you know, for the most part, you know, we have some volume accumulation down here. Uh, we did get a nice divergent signal down here. Now the Russell, if you're going to be looking at divergent numbers, you know, you have to understand the volume is going to be much lower. Participation is much lower. So you're not going to see those huge uh, Delta readouts. You're not going to see those huge volume readouts uh, like you will see on the ES, MES, NASDAQ, where you routine, re routinely see what 1.2 million contracts traded, you know, kind of on average between those guys. So if you are trading the Russell, just make sure, you know, that kind of uh, matches uh, what you're looking for because you don't want to be looking for, a, you know, a 2000 negative Delta or something uh, when you routinely see 50, 60, 70, 100. Um, you know, numbers down here on our Delta readouts. Uh, one last so, thing, I, go ahead. So Patrick, real, you know, just to sum that up, basically each, each, um, each market has their own kind of set of norms, right? Yeah, set, you know, based on Delta and, and, you know, interesting to me that, that um, candle at the bottom is that divergence you were looking for with the green candle, the red uh, uh, delta, yeah, uh, really nice indication. Yeah, hundred percent. And I mean, this is what I would almost call a textbook setup here. So if we go back to right here, we can actually tab over, and we can see that that is where our point of control for the day was. So price, we had a little pull up. We have price pull back. You know, we. I would personally call that a double bottom, bottom one, bottom two. We end up trapping some of those bears. We see that point of control. We have the delta divergence. We are also sitting right near our session point of control. Remember, this is our current, our custom profile. 
And then this right here is what's going on in the session. And then you can see we do get that nice little bump right back up uh, to that VWAP as well. And then we get hit with actually another uh, Delta Divergence setup as well. Awesome. Anyone? That looks great. That looks great. Now, I know, um, you know, we're, as, as always, time goes by uh, time, so fast time here. Time flies. Time flies. And, uh, you know, I know you wanted to speak, you know, some things that are going on with uh, Gorilla Futures. You've been, I think, were you our first guest? I think you were our first guest yeah, on I, Trainers I, Workshop. I, I, I was the the guinea pig for the first one, so that's uh, that's right. But no, I, and, I, uh, I I've enjoyed coming back here and stuff like that. But one one last thing that I want to touch on here before we go and talk about some of the updates, uh, that beeping noise that you may have been hearing, that is our Delta alerts. So what we do is, you know, you once you set that Delta number, uh, you can have audible alerts, you know, so you can be identified what's going on, whether that's positive or negative, and that it corresponds to whatever number that you have selected, uh, you know, in the settings kind of behind the indicator. So I just wanted to touch on that uh, before we kind of segue over. Uh, and to segue over here, we're just going to jump on our website real quick, gorillafutures.com. Uh, and we have recently released two indicators. Those are the two indicators that you have seen here on your chart, uh, our Footprint Pro and our heat map profile. Uh, both of those with Black Friday, Cyber Monday, they're still on sale. Uh, you know, we're going to be running our uh, holiday sales here. So make sure to take advantage of those. Uh, and we do have tons of information. Uh, if you do have any questions, you can jump on here. We've got videos, tons of examples, uh, and we do actually have detailed trades going over, you know, how you know, you can kind of use what we just talked about today uh, in your trading as well. Uh, and you can see, you know, we do have kind of how we compare up against, you know, some of the bigger players as well. So that is our heat map, uh, excuse me, our footprint pro indicator, our heat map profile, pretty much the same thing uh, in regards of information, tons of information uh, on here. So if you have some questions, by all means, uh, hit us up and we'll get you squared away with that. And same thing, we have tons of, you know, examples talking about before trades, after trades, setting up trades, uh, because honestly, you know, obviously, you know, we want to sell these indicators, uh, but our goal at Gorilla Futures, you know, we've kind of been changing things around. If you've been following us on YouTube, you know that uh, we really haven't been very active on YouTube. And the reason why is we've kind of been changing things. Uh, we really want to be kind of that one-stop shop. Uh, for futures traders, you know, we want our education, we want quality indicators that actually work, uh, you know, that traders can actually use. Uh, and then, you know, we've also, and this is kind of our last one, we have teamed up with Lilo uh, to give our traders discounts on their performance based accounts. Uh, we're also running a 60% off discount. Use code GORILLA60 uh, if you would like to save 60% off of their Aspire and launch accounts. And the reason why is, well, after talking with Chris at Lilo, uh, great company, you know, no upsell, anything like that, honest people. Uh, so it's one of those things that I thought would be great, you know, to combine, you know, our systems, uh, our education, and then you can hopefully get that uh, funding or that performance account uh, that we know a lot of traders are looking for. So those are just a few of the updates. We are releasing a handful of other indicators uh, kind of in line with this footprint setup. Uh, everything will be packaged together uh, and you can use code workshop to save 5% on those indicators uh, if you so wish uh, to today. Um, so as always, if you have any questions, let us know. That's just kind of a quick rundown of what's been going on. And yeah, we just honestly hope to be able to help out more traders and really be that kind of one-stop shop uh, for new and experienced traders out there. Awesome. Great. As long as I still see Gorilla Futures on Financial Juice, uh, yep. well, we'll see. You You know, I, I basically see, see Gorilla Futures every day because I look at that website as, every day as well. That's good. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, Pat Financial Juice, you know, not to plug them real quick, but we are a partner with them. So I do want to give them their little shine. You know, you want free information, you know, Financial Juice, an excellent resource out there. Uh, if you need information out there, you know, great company, great group of guys, you know, building that stuff back there. So check out Financial Juice. Like Tom said, we are a partner. You know, we don't get paid to say that. Uh, simply just a great group of guys uh, building a great product for the most part. Awesome. Yeah, no, we use it. We use it, um, you know, during the shows, before the shows, you know, uh, prep for the shows. 
So really like them. Just want to remind everybody, uh, Ninja Trader uh, platform, uh, Patrick's indicators through Gorilla Futures are available uh, through the ecosystem. Yep. We're also a brokerage agnostic platform. So reach out to a broker that you like. We uh, we welcome all that come with us. Um, but that is the Ninja Trader uh, 8 platform that mm-hmm. you're looking at these indicators on. Um, Patrick, we've run up against time. I want to thank you again for, for coming on. And it's fascinating to see what you've done here. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I appreciate being uh, brought back again. Hopefully next time we can dive into kind of the order flow and footprint and stuff a little bit more. But yeah, if anyone has questions, you know, by all means, reach out, take advantage of some of those Cyber Monday, Black Friday deals that we've got running on. And hopefully, you know, uh, we can help some people out. Awesome. Thanks again, Patrick. Thanks to all you viewers who are watching. Um, Next week, we will have another ecosystem partner on Traders Workshop. Looking forward to that. Uh, And Patrick, of course, looking forward to having you back on in the new year. Um, I don't know, January, we'll see if the schedules mesh, uh, would love to have you back on oh, yeah, And again, know. you know, go through exactly what you just mentioned. hundred um, percent, but thanks again. Congratulations on the exciting news from last week. That's wonderful news. Hey, thank you very and, much, uh, Tom. And hope everyone has a great, great rest of your week. Thank you. I, I second that emotion. And uh, we will see you all at bars closing 315. In the meantime, have a great trading day. Thank you. Thank you.